to all myself dr inku pina junior resident in department of radiology at mg medical college in the md yeah. my paper topic is spectrum yeah. of image finding is a complexes in it if we will start with the introduction uh radial plexus they can do c5 to t1 nerve uh, uh, most of their the most common cause of uh, radial plexus injury is stroke yes. clinical investigation of, uh, for peripheral nerve injury utility improved nerve conduction study and electromyograph imaging study is limited to extruding focal mass medium and external compression to the nerve mri can identify changes in peripheral nerve and secondary neurogenic alteration in skeletal muscle due to excellent soft tissue decay mri is helpful in, uh, in diagnosis and localizing site of injury on this prognosis picture a contrast study is usually done in patient with tumor or mass lesion and gadolinium is now administered in patient with traumatic brachial plexus these are the common uh, use of the brachial plexus injury in the birth injury motor vehicle accident or fall from the height of the stairs then classification of the traumatic brachial plexopathy we can classify it according to uh, two classifications sudden classification and sutherland and mckin uh, classification according to sudden classification normal uh, brachial plexus uh, injury is divided into three types neuro neuroplexia axonotomesis and neurotomesis Uh, in Sunderland, classification six degrees are there. Uh, so uh, first we will start with neuroplexia. It includes under uh, uh, classification uh, first degree uh, injury. Uh, it, uh, it includes impaired nerve conduction with intact axon and connective tissue layer, and usually recovery is tightly mediated by glycerol repair, and uh, usually we uh, manage conservatively. In axonotomesis. Uh, Sunderland classification second, third, and fourth degree included. In second degree, axonal disruption with intact endothelium, peritoneum, and epithelium is there. In recovery, is likely prolonged and temporary disruption. And we uh, usually we manage by conservative uh, methods. In third degree, axonal and endothelial disruption with intact peritoneum uh, and epithelium is there. And regeneration is usually handled by mild fibrosis. And recovery is likely with mild deficit, and uh, uh, management is conservative. In fourth degree, axonal, endothelial, and peritoneal disruption with intact epithelium is there. Regeneration is handled by uh, fibrosis, uh, and surgery may be done. In third degree uh, of sudden classification, neurotomesis. Fifth and sixth degree of Sunderland classification is included. In fifth degree, complete nerve disruption is there, and in sixth degree, any combination of fourth and fifth degree may be included. In usually both cases, uh, spontane uh, there is no chance of in spontaneous recovery, and surgery is usually considered. So this image can see uh, show, uh, in this image we can see various types of the injury. Uh, last one is neuroplexia, uh, second last axonotomesis, uh, then second one is first ganglionic tear, and first one is three ganglionic tear. Then uh, we will discuss. Uh, which uh, which nerves are affected in which uh, type of lesion? In supraclavicular lesion, uh, roots of C5 to T1 nerves are uh, affected usually, and other nerves are phrenic nerve, long thoracic nerve, trunk of upper, middle, and lower uh, nerves are affected, and now to subclavicular and supraclavicular uh, nerves are other nerves that are affected in supraclavicular. In clavicular in clavicular lesion, usually division of upper, middle, and lower trunk are affected. In intraclavicular lesion. Lateral and me, uh, lateral, medial, and posterior cord of the nerves are usually affected. Then uh, first we will see uh, pre-ganglionic branch, brachial plexus. Common findings are edema of the spinal cord, hemorrhage in nerve roots on GRE sequence, and pseudo meningocele. Uh, ideally, imaging of the suspected pre-ganglionic injury is performed at least three to four weeks after the injury. As uh, this allows the resolution of the acute edema and subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage and formation of a pseudo meningocele. So this is uh, the first case. Patient presented with symptom of right-sided uh, partial ptosis and myosis, likely a Horner syndrome uh, symptom. There was a history of the uh, trauma, six month base, and MRI was performed, and it shows a pseudo meningocele formation uh, in C7, C8, and T1 nerve roots at the level of neural foramina, suggesting uh, pre-ganglionic nerve root aversion injury. Second case. 
was a 6 year old child dented with weakness in left hand since birth with poor reflex sensory loss mild stiffness joint muscle weakness and atrophy there was history of assisted delivery at local primary uh, health center mr1 was found a well defined dumbbell shaped cystic lesion in left c7 to t1 uh, nerve root and left t1 to t1 t1 and t2 uh, neural foramina which is extra dural and extend just beyond the neural foramina the right c and uh, c8 and t1 nerve roots are not visualized suggestive pseudo meningocele and a preganglionic brachial plexus in profile then we will see post ganglionic